Daniel Shang here, host of the Extreme Fuel Efficient channel. Today is November 4th, 2017, my outing number 141 of this year. And as you guys can see, we are back. <laughs> if you guys follow me here on the channel, you know that exactly one week ago, one Saturday ago, I was at this lake back here, Lake Caroline, posted a video on the channel. We did a little multi-species assessment, right? In Lake Caroline, in the Queen Anne Creek, which is connected to the lake. And in that video, I actually posted a little poll, right? Asking you guys if you wanted me to come back here and do some bottom fishing for catfish. And not very surprisingly, you know, 95% of people replied, yes, Leo, just do it, right? So I looked at the pole there at my house and I saw it 95%, man. I was like, catch me outside, man. So yeah, we are back here. We're gonna do some catfishing today. The main question, the main premise is for today's video is, are there catfish in this lake? I have never done any catfishing here. I don't know if there are catfish here. So today we shall find out. Now, before we start the fishing portion of this video today, I would like, you know, to share some knowledge with you guys, right? If you want to just watch the fishing, feel free to do it. I'll leave the time here. But yeah, I would like to share you guys a little bit of knowledge about the history of catfish identification because, I mean, I find it fascinating, you know, and I think that you folks will appreciate your catfish so much more if you actually know the history behind the identification process, you know? So anyways, in this country, there are three types of catfish that are, are more commonly known, right? The first one is the channel catfish, the Ictalurus punctatus. The second one is the flathead catfish, the Pilodictus olivaris. And the third one is the blue catfish, the Ictalurus furcatus. Now, here is the cool thing about these different species of fish, right? And uh, th that I enjoy very much. The channel catfish and the flathead catfish were actually identified in the same year, back in 1818, okay? By this guy named uh, Constantine Samuel Raffinesque Schmaltz, if I am not wrong, okay? Now, does this date ring you a bell 1818 it should you know especially if you watched the last video on the channel right because in the last video here on the channel i actually talked about the chain pickerel and how the chain pickerel was identified right and it was actually identified in the year of 1818 not by raffinesque though it was identified by charles alexander lejoueur right now, here's the, where the coincidences come in. Did you know, for example, that both Le Joueur and Raffinesque were French? Uh-huh. And did you also know that both Le Joueur and Raffinesque decided to reside in the United States of America starting 1815? But the thing is, Le Joueur actually decided to leave the United States in 1837, and Raffinesque actually decided to stay. And boy, Raffinesque, had a tough death, you know. On September 18th, 1940, Raffinez died not only of stomach cancer, but also liver cancer, all right? So man, the dude had it tough, you know? And all the cities to die here in the United States of America, guess where he died? Philadelphia. Raffinez actually died in Philadelphia, believe it or not, you know? So yeah, this, <laughs> this is like, he, he's buried around here in one of the cemeteries, you know? And uh, another coincidence, on the year of his death, 1840, that was the year that the blue catfish first got identified by another French, this time a zoologist by the name of Achilles Valenciennes, you know? So this is all very like enlightening, you know, how this catfish all got identified back in the days. And of course, these three species of fish, they're the most commonly known, but there are other species out there as well, right? 
And uh, it's funny, it was kind of like a little war to see who would identify the different species of catfish first, you know, because in 1819, Lujuer, the guy who identified the chain pickerel, came back and he identified the Ameurus nebulosus, the brown bowhead, and the Ameurus natalis, the yellow bowhead. And then in 1820, Raffinesque kind of came back and he said, hey Lujuer, Step your game down a little bit, you know, I'm still in the game. And in 1820, uh, Raffinesque actually identified the black bowhead, the Ameurus melas, you know. And if you think about it, all the catfish fever is started with these explorers, right? Back in 18, uh, in 1758, you know, when Carl von Linné, right, the very well known Carl Lina Ailes, the father of the binomial nomenclature, right, identified the white catfish, the Ictalurus um, uh, catus, right, or nowadays the Ameurus catus. So I just wanted to share a little bit of the history with you guys for you guys to have an understanding and an appreciation for this species of fish, especially if you are a catfish angler, you know, because when you catch this fish and you actually know the history behind it you just feel so much more pleasure in what you do you know so i hope you guys enjoyed this little knowledge part of the video now i'm gonna go to the other side of the lake we're gonna try to catch some bait and as soon as i get some fresh cut bait we gotta uh, put it on the hook and see if there are indeed any catfish in this place so stay tuned all right there should be some sunnies around here we only need like one or two sunnies to tell you the truth. That is like prime, there we go. That's like prime fall bait for catfish. So we don't need a lot, you know? Uh, look at that, perfect size, man. We got here ourselves a bluegill, the Lepomis macrocutus. Perfect bait size. We're gonna chop the hell out of this fish, man. And we gotta catch some catfish with it. Oh, give me my worm back, bro. All right, there we go. That's the last one. I think two is going to be more than enough. So we got two little sunfish. I think this is going to be enough for today for the catfishing. I don't think the action is going to be so hot with the water temperature in the 50s range. So we got to take this bluegill, chop it up and try to catch some catfish on it. You know, it is actually quite funny. I'm walking to the, to the catfish spot now. It's got to be the deepest portion of the lake. But it is quite funny because a lot of people usually make fun of micro fishing, right? Oh, why do you do that? Blah, blah, blah. I tell you what, when you know micro fishing, my friends, you never need to buy bait again. Because, <laughs> you know, you, go, you only need like one worm or, or one lure and you can catch all the cut bait that you will ever need. Anyways, this is the place where we're going to be catfishing. I'm going to set up three rods on the cut bait right now and we shall find out if there's any catfish in this lake all right so as you guys can see today we didn't quite do it one rod one we're fishing style right i just used the knife today and you know just chopped the bluegills over here we gotta use this as cut bait there ain't nothing that will beat this type of bait during the fall for catfish so there we go, look, I just got a little tail portion here. We're gonna be using the head, the tail, the body, everything today. This one here is just gonna have a little tail portion. As you guys can see, a small hook, cause I really don't know what type of catfish is down here. I'm just using a slip sinker setup. I'm gonna link a video above so you guys can check it out how this is made, right? But pretty much this lip, right, sinker, and then we have the swivel and then the hook. This is an authentic, bottom rig that you can use for bottom rovers of all kinds so you know just cast it out there boom all the way down it's a uh, it's not that you know deep over here but it is the deepest portion of the lake so <laughs> i mean you know now we just wait all right this is the last rod that i'm gonna punch out today this one is the only one that has got like a dropper loop rig all the other two got a slip sinker set up rig with cut bait. These two over here are for catfish. This is gonna be my for fun rod with pieces of night crawler, you know? 
just to pass time, right? Because now we really have to wait for that bite. Oh, we got a little tap on the cut bait. Oh, we got, we got a bite on the cut bait. Very small bite, but it is on the cut bait. Oh man, what is this now? And is it on? Oh, I'm feeling small bites on the cut bait here. Now the main question is, is this fish going to get hooked or what? Oh, I missed it. Ah, oh, at least we had a bite on the cut bait. That's not bad, that's not bad. Some signs of life, huh? Check this out. Mmm. Okay. Well, we got a we got a bite on the cut bait, finally. I think it's on whatever it is here. Hopefully a catfish. What is that? That doesn't look like a catfish. You've got to be kidding me, man. Dude, we got a white perch on the cut bait. I mean, this is my first ever white perch from this place, but for real, man, like what is going on today, man? The Moroni Americana. I... Oh boy, I mean, I'm very happy to see that these are around here, okay? It's a beautiful, beautiful sample for sure. But I mean, man, this is a catfish video, you know what I'm saying? What are you doing here, huh? I'm sorry? Oh, you're done for the day. Yeah, all right, man. Can we take a picture of that cool with you? Yeah, absolutely, bro. Yeah, let's do it. Man, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a tough day, man. I mean, just a bunch of sunfish, you know? Yeah, that's But not a before. single catfish, man. That's crazy. You've been here for how long? Yeah, that is crazy. Like maybe three hours. I gotta stay for another two. Probably some more. Yeah, you know. You enjoy fishing, huh? Man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. You got it? If you send me via Instagram one of those yeah, days, the, just DM me, you know? I'll post it on the on this thing one day, okay? Got you, man. All, All right. right, man. Have a nice day. Bluegill. I think it's a bluegill. Jesus. That one jumped far out there, man. What's wrong with this bluegill? Yeah, bluegill. Man! Another little bluegill. I have to say, folks, I am perplexed, you know? When I do videos like this, when I bring videos like this on the channel, right, with a question mark on the title, like usually something like, uh, does it work or is there a certain species in a certain place? I really don't know what to expect, you know? I mean, I come out here and I shoot the video, but I never know how the video is going to turn out, right? And I have to say, guys, four hours fishing here at Lake Caroline today, you know, not a single sign of catfish. This is crazy, you know. I, I had hopes, you know, that uh, I had high expectations that we would at least, at least land a little bowhead, right? Because, I mean, this just looks like the perfect environment for, like, uh, for bowheads to thrive. I would think there's a lot of bullheads here, but I don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe I am wrong, you know? I thought we would catch a, like a channel catfish too, but so far it's like nothing. I still got two rods out there with cut bait and one with night crawlers. And I mean, we did catch some fish today, you know? And thinking from a positive perspective, I did land my first ever white perch from the lake, you know? That's like a bonus, you know? But like I tell you guys, you know, I mean, we tried, 95% uh, said, try it out, right? I'm out here, I'm trying. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> you know? So it is what it is. I'm gonna fish for a little bit more, but you know, if nothing bites, just gonna call it a day. It's getting chilly right now, high 40s. Last two fishing sessions on the channel have been top. I really, really haven't caught a lot of fish, you know? So maybe the next fishing session, I'm actually gonna go somewhere to boost my confidence a little bit, you know? And just catch all the species out there, you know? But I think the moral of this video is still stands, you know? Which lies in the fact that as a multi-species angler, 
you were like an explorer, you know? And just like those people back in the days who used to explore, get a fish and identify them, right? We do the same thing. We constantly try new techniques and new watersheds and new bodies of water. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's all part of the game, you know? And I would like to emphasize, right, on this channel, Extreme Full of Fishing, I do talk a lot, okay? There is fishing, but there's also a lot of talking because just like this video, I really want all videos to be at least a little bit educational, you know? You come here on the channel, there's the entertainment factor, right? The accent, the jokes, the innuendos, you guys know about it. But there's also the educational approach, right? So hopefully by watching this video, even though we didn't catch any catfish, you guys have learned something about catfish and about fishing in general, okay? All right, folks, I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching, tie lines, and until next time.